What's up, guys? What's up, buddy? Sitting here, got the tent and Machining some rotors right now. That is what I'm doing. Let's get it. I would play some music, but then I don't want to get uh, a strike from YouTube, so it'll be a little quiet. Gotta wear safety glasses. But these right here are some bits. Kinda hard to see. And kinda hard to not drop. I use these are what I actually cut the rotor. They gave it a good finish. So you always want to replace them. When you start machining rotors. Pretty easy concept. What you just gotta do it a few times. You get the hang of it. As far as heavy pulsation, you can tell usually just by a visual inspection that 
sometimes it'll give you a, a, a rough time when you're machining them. So when you're applying the brake, you that, that little kickback in the brake pedal is a good indication of your pulsation. It's a little annoying at times. Spin it, and then from right there, you can tell it's a nice, it's not wobbling or nothing like that. Uh, so now, bring in a little bit. On the next rotor, I'll show you a lot closer. But for now, I'll show you the concept. First thing, you've got two knobs, one, they, they both move like this together, but you want to have one stationary to get your first initial cut. You bring it in, you will hear this noise. And it's like ch ch ch, and it's not a consistent ch all the way around. That means you're not in there enough, and it's going to give you a incorrect cutting pattern. You want it to be nice and nice and even all the way around. being cut right now so you want that same consistency throughout the entire cut and then here's the knobs that I to show you so you would hold this and turn this to, to set up the turning points and you lock this portion lock it in place Sometimes it's a bore, and so in between, you would go and work on another job, especially if the brake lathe is near to your, especially if, you're, if the brake lathe is near where you're working at. So. 
Let me know if you guys got any questions in the, uh, in the chat. It's a pretty simple process. It's a little difficult when uh, you're first learning how to do it. Uh, this is one of the beginning things we teach the newcomers inside, all the apprentices, and sometimes the uh, hourly quick loop guys. It's a good way to save the customer some money and for technicians to turn some hours this way as well. Um, on the slow cut, it can take probably five minutes, ten minutes, depending on whether you have heavy pulsation and you have to cut it more than one time. It can take a while. Uh, if, it's, if you could tell, if it's, if it, when, when we did that initial turn, and the water didn't cut in the we would have to do a fast cut. That's pretty quick, but then you would have to go back again and do your slow cut and hope that uh, you get it all out in one turn. But sometimes you'll have to go on a second turn. So it be like a half hour, 45 minutes sometimes when you're dreading it. But you always got to check right afterwards to make sure that you are still with it back before you put it back on the car. You see the color is nice. So. After I do this one, I'll show you how I set it up, machine, and uh, I have another rotor to cut as well. So, this one just needed one turn, so we're good. And you want that same sound, I don't know if you can hear it, but the same just consistent sound all the way through. And if it starts chopping up, it, uh, it starts being terrible. And then you know that you rotor four. You have a lot of run out. But I've had some rotors where I'll start to cut it. I'll end up cutting too much just to try to get a nice even uh, consistency and it'll be out of, uh, out of spec and we have to replace the rotors at that point. Also, I don't know if you can tell how good my camera is, but there's three three of them, three points, and then you have another three points when you flip it, so you can get more uh, more uh, cuts out of this one little bit instead of just wasting it once and then having to replace it. So uh, at the, I don't, it's kind of hard to show you guys, but at the end it'll start, uh, the finish will start coming off and that's when you know you have to replace it. But I always change it right before I turn a new rotor or replace them so I know I'm not going to have fighting, fight, fighting just to turn the rotor. It's almost done.
And usually I would wear like a little respirator because you can see all this dust coming off and you don't want to breathe that in. just about done now. Okay, so now it's done cutting. Take this lever, there's slow cut at the end, off and then fast cut. So you just put it back to slow and that'll be just a stationary turning point. how well you can see like little swirl marks a little bit it's in there but it's nice and clear and it's a good cut through all the way so Spacers right here to go on it as well. And then this acts as like it's pretty much a balance slash uh, silencer for the rotor when you're when you're turning it. It's not howling. So I'm gonna grab the other rotor and then this key way to unlock it. So here's. A good cut rotor, and I'll show you the whole other one. A little bit of a difference. You can see it's dark, this color, compared to bright. adapter piece that you slide on there and it mount it pretty much contacts the inside of the rotor and like I said left hand threads Put the band back on. This has links, you would hook them together. Can't really tell, but let's see. These tips are worn out, but camera's not going to focus in right now, so. I'm going to change these bits to use a flathead. Usually, like, dealerships, some shops uh, still turn rotors, but some of the smaller independent ones, they just either, uh, they'll do a pad slat, which is, they'll just replace the pads and not uh, change, I mean, not even change the rotors or machine the rotors. 
and it's cost efficient not to do it that route but when you do that then your uh, the rotors are have impurities and they're going to wear the pad the life of the pad a lot quicker as if you go if you just replace the rotors or machine the rotors and it'll last a lot longer you go through pads a lot quicker if you don't machine them Lock them again. The pieces right here. Backing out. Then you want to go in a little bit. You want it nice in the middle. And once you start turning it. You'll grab this and bring the whole piece in. Right. Let's see. You hold it, set it at the zero mark, and then you turn the other portion until it makes contact. You hear that nice consistency right there. Same thing with this side. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I could sell just off the town if I'm good on the thickness right there. And you can see it's consistently. I even shut it off. Nice consistent line all the way across. Now start back up. Watch. But at this point, while you're on your second rotor, if you're working, you would go get the other rotor while it's cut and, and start assembling it back on the vehicle. So if you're cost efficient and you're working and you're turning hours, you have to go consistently work fast but efficient at the same time. If you're not efficient, you're not going to make money, you're going to make uh, mistakes, and it's just going to take you twice as long. I wish I could take this knowledge and apply it to like a machine, a machine ahead or a block, but we don't have this type of equipment, but it'd be awesome to learn how to do that as well. I'm pretty sure that's a lot more complicated to do. You 
see, same type of consistency. Cutting through, here's a older layer. That's where we uh, started our initial cut. And sometimes when people are cutting it, you can tell they're messing up when you're in the shop and you hear nothing but a high pitched squeal. And everyone just turns and looks at the brake lane. That person's running back over there to try to stop him and try to fix it. It's always important to have your uh, area where you're working on clean as well. But if you guys got any questions, just put them in the chat. I try to answer them as best I can. It's getting closer to the end of the day for me to go back home. So I decided to make a quick little uh, live video for you guys to enjoy. It's actually pretty quiet today, so this is a good thing. Sometimes. Especially if you have a headache. So if you're on the flat brake system, if you're doing a brake job, which is pad replacement and machining the rotor or replacing the rotor typically pays like two hours and sometimes it'll take you the entire two hours sometimes it might you might feed it and that's how you pretty much make money when it's a good thing for the customer good thing for the technician if you can beat it it's good for you and if you don't beat it either way it's still you know it takes longer the customer pays one flat fee it's a win-win situation sometimes, or a win-lose situation, depending on your skill level. Or how bad how badly warped the rotor is. You can usually like when you're when you've done it so many times, you can usually tell which one's gonna give you problems. Usually when I'm working and I'm, I'm putting, putting the brakes back on, I walk over here and just double check to make sure I don't have to re recut it. But it's nice and smooth and easy job. Rotor, uh, machining drums are a similar concept, but it's a completely uh, you set it up differently, of course. And you wouldn't use this type of uh, headset if you use a it has a bar. I only see them trying to find it. You would use this set right here because it will go in the inside of the, the drum and it will actually walk it out this way instead of cutting it on the side just like how this is. Okay.
probably another 30 seconds to a minute and then this rotor will be done. I have another rotor over here I'm going to show you, which a rotor that I wouldn't attempt to turn. You know, it's out of spec, just visually looking at it, you can tell that it's going to give you problems with it. Alright, so again, make this put it right in the middle. Back this portion out. Same paper again. Beautiful cut rotor, both ends. As you can tell, there's our newly turned rotor. And then you got this one, where you could, it's you could tell if it was in spec. You could probably machine it out. But once you flip it over, this rotor right here the uh, stopping area of the brake pad where it sits uh, has decreased and up and you could tell if you cut it it'd be uneven and it would consistently wear your brake pads quicker over time and then you're just gonna waste more money in the end so that's why you go to your professionals let them inspect your rotors and your brake pads and Unless you're going to do it at home and replace it all at once, and even, of course you probably don't have the machine to turn your rotors. But I've heard of some places where you take your rotors there, and if, as long as they're in spec, they'll probably turn it for you with, uh, without you having to bring the car, as long as you brought the rotors to them. But on this, you can tell, you can, you can feel the amount of rust on there and here that we would machine it. It wouldn't uh the area wouldn't be uh, good good enough for the brake pad but All right, guys. Well, another thing is always wear your safety glasses because it's metal uh, shards that will be flying up in the air, and it can get you in your eye, and that's a no-go because you want to be able to see. But because I was shooting the video, you would put this piece on there, and and it deflects it. As you can see, it keeps chip shield in place when machining. So when it reflects up and it hits this and not in your eye, that's why I wear glasses. And all you would do is take this piece right here.
And there you go. So when you're spinning it, you can change it up here, down here, and it'll cover it while it's turning and all the flakes are coming at you. And then we have a spot down here where all the shavings get caught. So we're going to have to empty that out soon. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you like it. Uh, drop a comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, this is 410 Auto Tech. Let's see. Well, I guess I have to sign out.